So let's analyze uh, this other square root function here that I've got. And uh, this time, instead of starting with the function, I'm, I, I give you the graph. So this is your graph here. You've got uh, the x and y coordinates that I forgot to write. And then, um, so I've given you the start point, also known as the vertex. And I've given you another point on the graph, point P, with coordinates negative 1 and negative 3. And before we start any analysis, what I want to do is first find out the rule of this function. So uh, what I ask myself very quickly is, in which direction um, is... So f before I do anything, I'm going to write the standard formula down so that I know what I have to find. So it's a root b x minus h plus k. Okay, now... I want to know, first of all, the sine of A and the sine of B. And uh, I can see right away that it's going to be a negative A because it's going downwards. And I can tell it's going to be uh, a negative B as well because uh, the, the um, graph is moving towards the left from my starting point. So left means negative B, down means negative A. So um, uh, right away I can replace my B with negative 1 because um, it, I can when, whatever I do whenever I find my uh, function all I have to write for B is either plus or minus 1 uh, because whatever A is compensates for whatever B uh, is except except B has to be either positive or negative so because it's going to the left I'm making it negative and I'm gonna write negative X minus H and plus K Okay, so I've figured out that my b has to be negative 1. Now let's plug in h and k. Right away, let's plug that into my formula. So I have y equals a minus x. h is uh, negative 2. So, well, actually it's 2, so in the formula it becomes negative 2. I'll write that in red. Negative 2 plus, and k is 5, so it's going to be plus 5. Okay, and from here now I want to solve for A by taking point P, plugging it into X and Y, and since A is the only thing I don't know, I can solve for A. So point P gives me negative 3 equals A square root of negative. X is now negative 1, so minus 1, minus 2 plus 5. This gives me uh, minus 3 uh, equals a. Uh, this gives me minus 1, minus 3 in the brackets, times the negative gives me positive 3. So times the square root of positive 3 plus 5. Now I bring 5 to the other side, it becomes minus 8 equals uh, root 3 times a. Divide both sides by root 3, and I get a equals negative 8 over root 3. Now, uh, let's rationalize the denominator, because we know how to do that. We multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3, and I get minus 8 root 3 over 3 equals a. And then I ask myself, do I need to reduce? 8 and 3 don't reduce, so I'm done. Now I'm going to rewrite my formula, finally, um, nicely. It's going to be y equals negative, so my a is negative, um, 8 root 3 over 3 square root of negative, because my b is negative, uh, x minus 2, minus 2, plus 5. So here's my formula. Okay, great, so I've got the formula. Uh, my a parameter is a little bit complicated. But that's all right. From here, let's find. Let's go right away into the the domain. So the domain is D. Uh, I can tell right away what the domain is because I know that my graph moves towards the left, uh, and and uh, the x starting point is two. So that means that my domain is going to be all the negative infinity, all the way from negative infinity up until two included, uh, and the range is going to be based on my starting point. It's going down going down, so let's see, ranges all this, um, 
so it goes down, so it goes down all the way to negative infinity, and it stops at 5, so it's from negative infinity all the way to 5 included. So that's my range. Um, let's find the zeros now. There's a 0. The way I do that is I make y equal to 0, and I solve for x, so it's going to be negative 8 root 3 over 3 square root of square root of negative 1 times x minus 2 plus 5. I bring 5 to the other side. I get minus 8 root 3 over 3 minus 5. Um, in fact, I can write minus 15 over 3 equals the square root of Oh boy, what a mistake. That's terrible, excuse me. Let me erase this, please. Um, so I brought 5 to the other side, and I get minus 5 equals 8 root 3 over 3 with a negative in front, square root of minus x minus 2. Uh, now I divide both sides by my a. So it's like multiplying by the uh, reciprocal, because dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. And I get... 15 over 8 root 3. You can, uh, if you wish, at this point, you can um, rationalize the denominator, but you'll see that it's not absolutely necessary because after the step, you square both sides to get rid of the square root. And in squaring both sides, what you get is uh, 15 squared over 8 squared is 64 times the square root of 3, uh, times the square root of square root of 3, which is 3 equals negative um, x minus 2. Now you divide both sides by negative, uh, it becomes negative uh, 15 squared over 64 times 3 is 19, 192, I think. Uh, and then I have x minus 2 on this side. Bring the 2 to the other side, and I get x equals uh, 2 minus 15 squared over 192. And whatever that gives you, on, whatever you get on the calculator, that's going to be your 0. So we found the 0. We can find the y-intercept in a similar manner. Uh, we make x equal to 0. So uh, y equals negative uh, 8 root 3 over 3 square root of minus x minus 2 plus 5. And uh, I make my x 0. Um, then I get uh, the square root of, of 2, because the two negatives become positive. Uh, so I have really minus 8 root 3 over 3 times the square root of 2 uh, plus 5. And whatever that is on your calculator is your y-intercept. Uh, finally, uh, let's graph this one last time. Uh, the graph was given to you at the beginning, but I'm going to graph it again. It looks something like this. Uh, we can see that there's a y, uh, there's a maximum, and that's the y value of your starting point, and that was 5. So uh, the maximum is y equals, so let me write max, maximum is y equals 5. Um, <clears throat> it's increasing, no, it's, yes, it's, sorry, it's decreasing, that's absolutely not true. It's increasing from negative infinity all the way up until five, uh, until 2, because the x coordinate was 2. So it's increasing, e increasing, increasing all the way, and it stops at 2. So from uh, negative infinity to 2, we have it increasing. So I write it like this. This means that our function f of x is increasing. And uh, it's positive. It's positive from our zero all the way to two. Don't forget, it doesn't keep going past two because there's no function on this side over here, according to our restrictions. And it's negative. It's negative from negative infinity all the way up until our zero over here. All this is negative underneath the graph, underneath the x-axis.